completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 18 using my new ultrasonic cleaner to remove dirt from the engine parts and cellulose thinner to remove the paint. I bought this digital ultrasonic cleaner quite recently. It was advertised as having a 15 litre capacity but in reality it only takes about 12 and a half. I'm not bothered about that though, it's big enough for what I need, I can get a locomotive wheel set in there, no problem at all, maybe two. When I take off the lid, you can see there's a basket inside. I'm removing the basket, and now I'm going to fill it with some water. This unit has a heater, but it wouldn't win any prizes for being the quickest and best heater in the world. That's why I'm filling it with very hot water from the tap in this large pan. The first water in the pan is just to warm it up, and now I can fill the pan with the water. I bought this ultrasonic cleaner because lots of viewers wrote in and suggested that I buy one of these things, and so now I have. I'll speed up this bit so you don't fall into a coma at the beginning of the episode. I filled the ultrasonic cleaner's tank about three quarters full. Here's the front panel, with some very Chinese English on it. Admonition, hmm, that's a new one. And do not use this unit when the tank is not to fill with water. Despite that, I do think that this unit is going to be quite useful. This is what happens when I switch it on at the mains. The setting for the heater defaults at 50 degrees centigrade, but as you can see, the water that I put in the tank is 66 degrees. That's why I'm turning the setting of the heating up to above the figure on the right-hand side. When I turn the heater on, the right-hand figure starts flashing to tell me that it's not at the allocated temperature. It takes a while for the right-hand figure to start climbing upwards. I bought some of this special stuff to put in the water. If you read the label, you can see what it does. Before I bought this proper solution, I did try some other methods that were quite successful. Washing up liquid worked very well, and a dishwasher tablet worked even better. In my kitchen, I have a really old mortar and pestle, and I would never think of using it until now. With a dishwasher tablet in the tank, the ultrasonic cleaner did a really good job of cleaning it. I'm guessing how much of this yellow liquid to pour into the tank I've possibly put too much in. In fact, I'll put a bit more in. You can be very economical with this liquid. If you put the liquid in a plastic bag and then put the part you want to be cleaned inside the plastic bag, then you can reuse it. But for this job, I just wanted to use it as it was designed to be used. I'm going to ultrasonically clean all the parts of the engine. The first part to go into the tank is the sole plate, the crankshaft and the main bearings. I'm very curious to see what it does to the paint because this paint is quite badly chipped in places. And now it's switch on time. It makes a really horrible noise. I don't know why but it's a bit reminiscent of having your teeth drilled for a filling at the dentist. But listening more carefully I think it sounds more like something from Dr Frankenstein's laboratory. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave this clip on screen for too long. You can soon get too much of a good thing. The temperature is just about holding its own. When you turn on the ultrasonics, the temperature of the water actually drops. I set the ultrasonics to run for 10 minutes. I've increased the speed of the video so you don't really have to sit through it. There is another noise in the kitchen, but it's quieter than the ultrasonic cleaner. It's my dishwasher. After 10 minutes, I lifted the basket out and had a look at the parts, and they look very clean. I was a bit concerned about the water and cast iron mixture causing rust, but it didn't. The entire part is very hot to touch, and in no time at all, the water just evaporated. Also, the ultrasonic cleaner loosened some of the paint. Here, with a knife, I'm helping it along a bit. What I'm going to do is take this up to the workshop and sit it in a bath of cellulose thinners, Although these days I'm using some stuff that's called gun wash and it's for cleaning spray guns. It seems to do the same job. I'm only using it for degreasing the parts anyway. Here I'm just messing about to see how easy it is to remove the paint and it's very easy. Now that I'm confident that the ultrasonic cleaner is going to clean these parts, I'm putting the rest of them in. Starting with the box base followed by the intermediate and low pressure cylinder block and the high pressure cylinder block. Time to turn on the horrible noise again. 
This time I think I'll put the lid on to see if it makes it any quieter. But alas no, it makes the noise louder. But it doesn't really matter because once you set this thing going you can go away and do something else. The temperature's still holding its own. The next part of the job doesn't involve the ultrasonic cleaner. I do want to remove all of this paint. So I'm dismantling the crankshaft and the main bearings and putting them precisely in the same order in a box at the side just off camera. I think it's time to have a look at the crankshaft. This is made from one piece of steel. The builder of this engine in the first place was an excellent engineer. Ten minutes has gone by, how time flies when you're having fun, and I've removed the parts from the ultrasonic cleaner and given them a bit of attention with a piece of green Scotch-Brite. I drained out all of the water from the cavities in the castings, so rust shouldn't be a problem. And the parts are still quite hot, so any water left on the castings should evaporate quickly. Time to take the sole plate, complete with the lower half of the bearings, up into the workshop. And here, with a small brush and some Halford's dark green hammerite type paint, I'm painting the sole plate to see if it attacks the paint underneath. It doesn't seem to, but the first coat of paint on this particular part isn't very good, so I've decided to remove the bearings, putting them exactly in the right order, and each of them has a shim, and the bearings and shims need to be fitted back to the sole plate in exactly the same order as I've just taken them out once I've finished the painting. I filled a polythene tub with gun wash, which is cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, and submerged the sole plate in this liquid. This should dissolve the paint. I'm using this electric toothbrush that a viewer sent me. It's quite a large thing and I thought it was going to be useful, but unfortunately cellulose thinners attacks the plastic that it's made from. So I'm going back to the old method of using my toothbrush. I think this toothbrush is made from polypropylene and nothing seems to attack that. This casting has been painted with red oxide primer and here I'm using a wire brush to remove as much of it as possible. I intend to paint it using some etching primer which should really bite into the cast iron. So I will be removing most of this red stuff. Finally I'm putting the box bed into the solvent. This was all done yesterday so by now the green paint should be very loose. I'll go and have a look in a moment. Apologies to my patron supporters for today's video being a bit late. I went into York to look at a second-hand Myford ML7R, which may be in my workshop very soon, but that's it for now. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back-to-back.